So I'll get straight to the point. The hidden benefit of declarative code is that it has given me an entirely new perspective on code folding and made it far more useful. I do most of my declarative style coding in Angular and we'll circle back to Angular soon, but I actually came to this little mind blowing realization whilst working on some game dev stuff with Phaser. I've had this alpha version of URL Town out for about a year now, and I still use this thing as part of my everyday workflow. So I'm revisiting it to update it into a more polished product. Just as an aside, if anyone watching this actually uses URL Town, please get in touch and let me know how you're using it. Anyway, the point for this video is that I was revisiting this phaser code, which was already becoming an imperative mess. And this is one of the key problems with imperative style code. If you don't have the context of how it all works because you haven't worked on it in a while or you're new to the project, Trying to piece it all together is more painful than using Vim as your daily code editor. Declarative code in Angular has made my life about 10 times more enjoyable, so I thought, why not? Why shouldn't I make my phaser code declarative? And so I did, and a lot of the tangled complexity of the imperative code disappeared. But there was still quite a lot of code in this file, which is where code folding comes into the story. I've never really liked the idea of code folding, mostly because it hides context and it seems like a bit of a crutch. If the file is so large that it requires editor features to navigate efficiently, then that's probably a sign that the code needs to be refactored. This is generally how I would approach things in Angular, but in the case of this phaser scene, everything that is left here now makes sense to be here. I've moved plenty of things out into utility files that are being imported where it makes sense, and I've created this reactive scene base class to remove some of the boilerplate required to make the code declarative. But to split this file up any further wouldn't make much sense. And that's when I had my realization around code folding and declarative code. Let's go back to the imperative code for a moment. Code folding doesn't make much sense to me here. If I fold everything away, I'm not left with much information. I can see these declarations, but they are being changed imperatively. In other words, this is not declarative code so they don't tell me much. All of the behavior for how these entities are being imperatively changed is contained within the create and update lifecycle hooks. So if I expand these, I just get all of the imperative code thrown at me. To me, this feels like trying to organize a computer desktop with 200 icons on it by dumping them into three folders called stuff one, stuff two, and stuff three. It doesn't really achieve anything except hiding it all away. If you want to find something, you still have to search through all three folders. But code folding with declarative code is much more useful. Now when I fold everything away, I can see all of my declarations. And if I'm interested in any one particular thing, I can just expand the declaration of that one thing. I can easily see what it depends on and how its value is calculated all from within the declaration of the thing itself. This is never imperatively changed anywhere else in the code. In other words, this is declarative code. All of the side effects are contained within the constructor. If I want some more information about what those side effects are, I can just switch to the next level of code folding. Now I can easily see which values cause side effects, and if I want to see the specifics of any of these side effects, I can just expand the one that I'm interested in. Now I can see what this particular effect does in response to the reactive values changing. With declarative code, just like a good folder system, I can see all of the important information at a glance, and I can then drill down into the specifics of what I am interested in. Now, taking this back into an Angular context, I feel like code folding is definitely less necessary, as generally my components and services in Angular are a more reasonable size. But I've been playing around with code folding a bit in Angular and it's actually pretty nice. Take this service for example, which is also mostly declarative. It's easy enough to scroll through this and get a sense of what is going on. But if I apply some folds here, things become a lot easier to quickly absorb. On almost one screen, I can see all of my sources, selectors, and I can see where those sources are being connected to the state. If I want to see in more detail how the add source updates the state, I can just expand that one thing. I can also see that there are some side effects. And again, I can just quickly pop that open to see what those side effects are. So even though I've never really felt like I've needed code folding in Angular, this just seems like an obvious DX improvement to me. This is new to my workflow, so I'll need to play around more, but I will be very surprised if this doesn't become a permanent part of my workflow from now on. 
If you like this video, a like or subscribe before you go will be very much appreciated, and I hope you have a great day.